Hey everyone, this is Gilbert with Interactive Utopia and on this edition I'm going to be showing you how we can work with the Google Authenticator app to create a second factor authentication for your application or website. Uh, basically what it does is uh, it creates um, code that it gets renewed every 30 seconds so the user the user needs to scan this QR code uh, into the app and that way it's going to generate the password right now we have a sample password um, let's see if it works so invalid one-time password as you can see it has expired already but if we go ahead and refresh it we get a new password which now we can use to verify and now it's valid. So let me go ahead and show you how it's gonna work, how we can go into the app and get that updated password. And uh, let's just get started, let's go. All right, so once again, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Gilberto and I'm with Interactive Utopia. So if you need any help with your projects, definitely do let me know. I hope that you like this video. If you do like it, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment box below. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So basically what we're gonna be doing, again, it's create, uh, we have to first create the QR code that we're gonna be, or, or create the code that we're gonna be using to create the QR code, which then we can implement into the application, the Google Authenticator application, and then uh, we can go ahead and, and be able to retrieve the password. All right, so let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. All right, so here is the code. All right, so um, the first thing that I want to explain to you is uh, basically there is not an API for this. It's not a um, something that you go to Google and like you, you send them information, they send you information back. It's just an implementation of a standard. The standard, uh, it's this one right here, uh, RFC number 6238 and it's called TOTP time based one time password algorithm so it's basically this is a document that it's going to explain to you and tell you what you need to do in order to comply to their um, to their requirements and that way uh, you can implement it with the Google Authenticator API so the the Google Authenticator API, it's just like a generator of codes per se, uh, where you store the users or the user is going to store their key. And then the phone is just going to be creating that password each time he goes in there. Alrighty. So the, it's like similar to when they send you the text message with, you know, the the uh, password, maybe it's only valid for 10 minutes or something like that. On this scenario, they don't, nothing gets sent over the uh the, the SMS or over the internet, it's just, uh, you, it's in the application and that one regenerates every 30 seconds. All right, so very important. I'm gonna put all these links in the, uh, uh, in the uh, section right below. So if you need to go and take a look at them, definitely go and take a look. As well, all of the code is gonna be on my GitHub. So if you need to access it, you can go to github.com forward slash Gilberto Cortez. The, pro the project name is Google APIs with PHP and you'll be able to find the the, um, the files in there or uh, for, for the implementation. Okay. Um, so if we go over here to the code, um, we need to use Composer um, to include some packages. Uh, and, and for that, we need to install them in the server. So I hope that you are aware that you can go to the um, packages.org website and you can you know just obtain them. We're gonna need uh, two uh, main ones. Basically, this one right here called Google 2FA and then this one right here, which is Bacon QR code. This is to generate the actual QR code and the other one is to um, you know, generate the implementation of the, of the code per se. 
um, and then basically all of them it, they also have their their github page so if you want to take a look at the files and you know dig a little deeper you can do that as well the link it's going to be right here on this side on both of them all right so let's go back to visual studio code and uh, the first thing you got to do you got to go and get those two um, packages install them in your server and then you can include them on your file uh, I start the file by you know starting the server session because we're I'm going to use it to store some information in the future um, we set to true uh, to display all the errors that way it's a little easier for development and then we need to require the, the uh, auto load file, which then it's going to allow us to uh, implement the classes, the Google 2FA class that I was talking to you about, and then the Bacon QR code, which is these ones right here. Uh, the top are the renderers, and then this one, it's the actual writer to create the file. Okay, uh, so the first thing once we include those classes into our file the first thing that we're going to do is to initiate a new class or our new object of the google 2fa um, uh, object or class uh, so we initiate it and then that's going to allow us to generate a secret key for the user so as i was telling you the um let me close this right here so right here you can kind of see this is what you're going to get once you're installing them and then you just need to require them all right but sorry going back to what, what i was talking to you about so what this is going to do if you can remember the document that i referred to a little earlier which is you know how to implement it this class basically does all that for you so you need to generate a key that is going to be the key to the user and that class is going to generate it for you so you just need to generate it and then store it in a variable uh, along with the user email and then we're going to be using that right now to create the uh the qr code url all right um so what i'm going to be doing right now this information that we are getting I'm going to be storing or, or you know the, the user information and the key that we're getting from the class we're going to be storing it in our server session why because uh you're going to have to store it somewhere at some point you know either in your database or of course somewhere encrypted and safe uh if possible uh or you know the best that you can possibly do it but in this case we're just uh, doing some development so i'm just storing it in the server session really quick that way we can um you know recall that information later on because we're gonna get we're able to create the QR code but then as you saw you know we can we can kind of work with the password that that is given to us for the first 30 seconds but if we want to work uh, or if we want to make sure to confirm the you know the, the code that the application is gonna be giving us we need to interact with that key that has been generated because if we don't know it we're not going to be able to verify it uh, so what i do is i created another document which we can access by ajax and then you know just kind of input the um the code and it's going to tell you it's true or not true you know depending on what it is but that's why we're storing it on the server session just so that we can recall it once we're trying to verify the code um, it's uh, you also need to put a name for the application uh, you can people some people put the person's name in there but I you know when, when you open it on your phone it's going to give you like the email and then it's going to give you like a big name in there so usually it's good to put the application name that way they know what that is for and then maybe their username as the email um, so with those three things you know basically the user code that we generated their email and then the application name we can generate a url to create the qr code um, again the the class that we that we uh, implemented you know the google tfa class it's going to be doing all that for us so all we need to do is provide it the information and it's going to give us a url uh, back all right so basically once the user if uh you know they put their phone to the qr code and that qr code has the url which then 
it kind of provides the information to the Google Authenticator application. All right. So to this point, you know, we have the URL. Uh, and now that we have the actual URL, we need to create the QR code. So this section right here, I'm just creating a new instance of the bacon QR code class that way we can generate that QR code okay uh, there's two ways to do that we can either save it on a file or we can just display it to the user right there and then if you want to save it to a file this is the line right here you know we need to use the writer to write the file you know the URL code that we the, that we just obtained and then this is going to be the file name but that is not what we're doing right now. What we want to do is show the user that information. So this right here, what that's going to do, it's going to write this the image string data. That way we can kind of display it in an image tag. But in order to display it, it needs to be base 64 encode. So that's why, you know, I'm encoding it so that we can display it. But this right here, it's the actual QR code image, if it makes sense. Um, and then this one right here is just generating the current password at that time. That way we can test it out. Of course, you usually don't want to do that, you know, for safety reasons. Uh, but either way, it only works for 30 seconds or so. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, so now we have, we, we took that URL code to create or QR code. And now we need to display it. So if we go to the HTML code, um, we have this image tag right here, which basically, you know, on the source, we're just putting that image. It's a PNG image. Uh, it's base 64 encoded. And then we're just echoing out or printing the code that was generated over here. All right. You know, the, the base 64 uh, data that we got from right string. Um, and then that's pretty much about it. That That's going to give you the QR code. Uh, now to verify it, I just created a small form, uh, you know, that it, it just, you know, the you have an input, a number input where you can kind of put the six digit code in there with a button that it's, um, you know, that's the value it's verified. When they click on it, it calls verify OTP, which basically if we go to the JavaScript code, it's just an asynchronous function that it's just calling a fetch you know uh you know it's just fetching the information uh i'm doing it over you know get which is on the url which is not safe you got to do posts or something way more secure than this but again we're just doing a quick and easy example that way you can kind of take a look at it uh and then we so we're basically fetching that page uh where we're passing the current code where we get the response as JSON, and then we're just going through the response. If the result means true, then it's a valid password. If it's false, then it's an invalid password. Um, so let's go ahead, let's see. If we go to the PHP page, which is the back inside of it, um, again, you know, session start, we're displaying the errors. We are including the auto load uh, and the Google TFA class. In this case, we don't need the QR code generator because we're just kind of going to verify the code. And all that it does, it's it re first of all, it's going to retrieve that key or that user information from the se server session. Um, and then, you know, which has the key in it. And then we're going to be getting the the one time password from the URL that we just sent in. Uh, and all that we do is we use the verify key function. We give it the, the secret key that we that was generated initially for the user. We give it the provided password and then it's going to tell you yet yeah, true or false. Uh, and uh, and then we just send that information back. Uh, the way that I do that is I create a new um, class object uh, basically with two um, objects in there uh, you know the provided password which it was the original one and then the result if it's true or false and then we send that information back and as I mentioned if it's if it's true then it's valid if it's false then it's invalid you can do a lot of different implementations depending on your use and for your application maybe they're logging in uh, I don't know they're 
whichever way you want to do that but again you just don't want to do it over the url you want to do all that encrypted and if you're going to be uh, or when you're going to be storing the key make sure that you're encrypting that or using a really secure service that because if not you know it's pretty easy to break in uh, of course that is why it's a multi-phase uh, authorization process that way if one of the areas fail there's still the the you know the usual login or if the user login fails and there's this so uh, it's not perfect I don't think but it's a it's it's a better way to to secure your application all right so um, let's go give it a try again so Right now, it was working as I mentioned, you know, once we refreshed it. But if we try it again, you can see that it's an invalid password. But if I go over to my cell phone, and then basically I'm going to be scanning the QR code that was created, and then it's going to give me a password, which is 479438 for right now. We're going to verify. And then it's valid. All right, so definitely, you know, it, it does work. It's just the implementation of, of the uh, standard, the RFC 6238. And uh, that's pretty much how it works. You don't need to connect with any APIs or anything like that. You just need to, um, you know, you can download the classes that are going to allow you to do this. You can always do it custom if you want, but then you're going to need to know all the specifications and, you know, it's pretty time consuming. So, you know, if it works, why reinvent the wheel? Of course, if you have something a little better, you know, definitely. But for what we're trying to do, which is working with the Google Authenticator API or uh, application, I'm sorry, this is the easiest and most convenient way because basically you just implement the classes uh, even in here. Well, it's already open but if you go to their documentation they have a playground which you can kind of see how everything that they offer works but if you go over here you know it, it tells you exactly what you need to do include a class create the instance and then generate the user key um, there's a little bit more to it as you saw but they give you all that information so yeah you know hopefully that helps out again not super complicated it's just two pages uh, or two documents per se uh, the actual code that we need you know it's like this right here so you know it's it's not very overly complicated uh, if we go ahead and let's, I'm just gonna save this so it's gonna write write it into where is it so if we go to uh, what it was the name QR code.png. There we go. So that's the image that got stored on the server. Of course, you gotta have uh, writing um, privileges to do that, but uh, that's basically how it works. All right. So hopefully, what that helps you. Uh, again, if you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up. If you like it as well, do subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. And um, yeah, uh, any issues or anything like that, let us know. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. All right? Have a great day.